What's up, y'all? Beyond the Harmony, beyondtheharmony.com. I am C Dub Cecil West, back again with the one and only Jonathan Lippy. And this is the Beyond the Harmony question of the day. Today, Johnny, today I gotta know. Not your favorite. Don't tell me your feelings. I got to know the facts. I got to know the truth. Today, I got to know what is the best Bone Thug solo song of all fucking time. Not even a question. It's not even a presumption. It's not even something worth even discussing. But somebody brought it up and they wanted to know. And I'll let you know. We represent the panic, it's schizophrenic, and panic, and the best will understand. Thugs Cry by Busy Bone is the all-time undisputed best. I don't care what anybody says. It's better than any Crazy Bone solo song, and we know Crazy Bone's the greatest of all time. But when Thugs Cry by Busy Bone was the most explosive, the, it's Busy's best song of all time, even better than Way Too Strong. It's his best written. It's his best delivered. It's the most energy. It's the most bonkers, the best video. Busy Bone When Thugs Cry. This is Busy's uh, magnum opus. This is his, his top dog. Nothing better. Even crazy on the solo tip. Never came with the impact, with the ferociousness. When Thugs Cry just blew me away, and it, to this day, is still mind-blowing. When Thugs Cry, it's the best, it's my favorite, and it's the, what was the other one? Most important? Yeah, I think it's the most important solo. It's all three. Busy Bone, When Thugs Cry. I would like to see you beg the different with me, Cecil West. What do you think the best solo track of us all time? I just want to pick something ridiculous, like some crazy Lazy Bone fucking... <laughs> Uh, we keeping the lights on at Ruthless and I ain't fucking the boss. Uh, I, I, I fucking 2 million percent agree. Heaven's movie was not the project that we wanted it to be. We all know how incomplete Heaven's movie was. We all, uh, you know, assume we know what it could have been, what it should have been, what it would have been. But what we do know is that thugs cry represents those things thugs cry represents what heaven's movie would have been like if it would have been busy's full vision thugs cry is the absolute pinnacle of bone thugs solo music and bone thugs solo music videos thugs cry is so good that it almost starts pushing on the bone songs themselves and is probably in the top fucking five bone songs possibly it's definitely in the top 10 and the video without question is blowing most of them away this video if you guys have never heard me talk about this video this is a monumental moment in bone thugs this is a monumental moment for us as fans watching what happened in this video even now even today looking at it this many years later we're talking like 21 years later we still cannot fully grasp the magnitude of how great Thug's Cry is as a song or as a video. I don't know if Thug's Cry happening this early, it being that single, that almost may have been what made it so hard to repeat. It's real hard. It's real hard when you're a rookie and at your first at bat, you step up and you knock a grand slam out that brings the whole team all the way around to home that gives the team the win. It's real hard to repeat after your first at bat does that. I think that this set this guy up to always be be chasing the glory because that song is so fucking good that it blows my mind. And the thing that happens with us as Bone fans is we get a song that's so good that it blows your mind, but unfortunately it doesn't have the visual backup. We, we missed it with songs like Notorious Thugs not getting that visual backup, but we got it with this one. And we got it in a way that I, I cannot say enough how well we got it. That video 
the representation of B.B. Gambini, the symbolism behind the jail leaving the jail, which represented Ruthless, leaving Bone in the jail cell and walking away, riding off into the sunset, dressed in all white, that, that sign of his final freedom, taking off those orange, that orange and riding into the sunset in that car, only to end up in the mental asylum at the end, chasing the same dreams that he's been chasing, seeing Biggie and seeing Easy and seeing Pac. That moment, that video, that is a historical game changer. And it set the bar so high that Busy chased it, that all of Bone chased it solo. I would absolutely challenge anybody to tell me a better Bone solo song or video than that one. This one is the pinnacle. All hail thugs cry, motherfucker. You know, and <clears throat> there's a line in the song that's always blown me away because it it happened, I believe, before Eminem came with the style. But when Busy goes, I didn't stutter, but what if I lost it and came in the office and nobody noticed with liquid the whole liquid explosive on top of Versace clothes, give up the ghost? Like that's some Eminem shit, but Eminem didn't exist yet. You know, not everybody was biting Eminem yet. And that I'm not saying that it's like Eminem, but it's like something that Eminem would say. And Busy said it before Eminem was even on the map. What if I lost it and came in the office and nobody noticed with liquid explosives on top of Versace clothes? Give up the ghost. <laughs> that mm. line is just so bananas, bro. He's talking about blowing up the place and how you know he was going to do it. The, the, the thing that's bananas about it is Eminem was a shock value rapper. If Eminem said that he was going to wear explosives into the office and blow the fucking office up, it was an Eminem moment to go make you go, wow, the white boy says some crazy shit. But Busy Bone saying that he'll wear liquid explosives on top of the Versace and walk into the fucking office and blow that motherfucker up. That's with real liquid explosive shit. That's real shit. That guy has said it. That that isn't that isn't shock value. That isn't made to just make you go, oh, oh shit, that's crazy. That guy is he's saying it, bro. That that's why that's why this song's so important. This, this isn't just this isn't just a song. This is the full confession. Thug's cry is the full confession it is years of frustration uh the fallout of easy e the fallout of the contracts uh this is the frustration the frustration with tamika wright all of it this is the confession from busybone it, it is real when he says triple six rivals triple six rivals he's not just saying it to to you know th there's beef in hip hop today and it's so made up it's so make believe it's it's fucking fake but the way that he felt about the beef with triple six rivals is the way that Pac felt about having beef with fucking mob deep you you feel busy bone in your soul the way you could feel Pac definitely on thugs cry anybody that's not feeling thugs cry if you don't like thugs cry unsubscribe get the fuck out of here the ghetto media don't let the light skin fool you i will fuck you up so it was good. the shit bro everything and, about and, it and to me it's the ultimate rap video ever because i just it it bodied every everything it hit on everything it hit on everything best best jail video hands down so great man. cameos maya west side connection bone thugs and harmony Members of Seventh Sign, um, uh, uh, amazing, amazing in every way. Uh, I mean, uh, what would come second? Like, what, what would be your number two, the best solo I mean, track? Number two, it's hard even to even know. Me. Like, everything's a distant it, second. It, it would be a distant second. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. You know, off the top of my head, because when when we did the when the, we did, when we did the question, it was just like. I mean, this is Thug's Cry, you know. I, I think somebody asked yeah. this, right? Somebody asked this in the comments. Yeah, yeah, and, it's the best uh, solo. Yeah, and it's just like, just, 
thugs cry. I mean, come on. Um, and, and, and what's interesting too is I think we did what's the best solo album, and we chose Thug Mentality '99 hands down mm-hmm. because, as you were pointing it's out very earlier, complete. Have, have, it's complete. Whereas Heaven's yeah. movie, you know, if if Heaven's movie was all on that level of Thugs Cry, of and even even like the way Nobody Can Stop Me was written. Nobody can I stop me. I think that yeah. song is is a tremendous like that on the freeway. On know, the freeway is a great song. Um, yeah, but but I want to give. I just want to. I, I wanted to say like that that Nobody Can Stop Me is a wonderful song. Like as far as penmanship and writing. See, like when Thugs Cry, we just love it because it's just, it's so powerful. It's just so like, yeah. But Busy's probably his best song or his most personal song is probably that one. Uh, Nobody Can Stop Me. Like, like it gets, it gets overshadowed by just the, just the the action film that is Thugs Cry. But, um, but Nobody Can Stop Me is good. But yeah, Demons Surround Me. The, but even Demons Surround Me, as good as, I, I used to play that one all the time. It still isn't at that level, though. It's not at the Thugs Cry level. It's, it's a great it's song. It's definitely not at Thugs Cry, but, it, you know, I mean, it's like, uh, you, you could see the blocks were there. You know, it, this this yeah. album just got cut short past past the ones that are just snippets, which to me never made sense. They should have just cut those all together. But, uh, you know, I, I think that this was even, even without the, the snippets, this was shorter than it was supposed to be. There was just, we know that there was more to this record. Um, but Thugs Cry, man, you, you got to be so thankful for whatever got cut, why ever this album got fucked up. At least that didn't get fucked up. That track, and, and you know, and speaking with Romeo and knowing how Prince was against, you know, a lot of the hip hop shit, uh, it's it's amazing that that this happened. And, and I actually believe that Romeo, like, went on Busy's behalf uh, for this song. Um, and and rightfully so this is uh this is soul music like i said this this is the confession i do feel the same way about nobody can stop me i don't want to get off on a tangent but i did mention on the freeway i know that's kind of like uh not the average uh john song but how do you how do you feel about that on the freeway track i i oh, appreciate yeah. it so much more now it's you know i, I remember at first i was like I don't know how I feel about this. Like, you know, I was a young dude and Thugs Cry was all I wanted to hear. But man, I, I have a, a fond appreciation for how good On the Freeway is with uh, Cat Cody. Yeah, absolutely. Like, well, when that came, when that came out on the freeway and Busy was going solo and Crazy was going solo and they were going in a whole new direction. I When I heard On the Freeway, I was like, well, well, shit, uh, more of this. I mean, we if Busy wants to go in this direction and you know, he had the track with, immature give up the ghost so I was thinking all right hey if we go this direction I'm completely okay so long as you drop one thugs cry level type track because you know me I'm always with them going full R&B or full alternative so I I never had a problem with on the freeway and I always put on the freeway combined with one night stand like I feel like those two go together and so yeah I, I was completely good with on the freeway absolutely and there was, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you with this is marching on. Well, actually, did you have anything else you wanted to say about on the freeway? No, no. I was just curious what you, what you thought about it. I, you know, I, like I said, I really the, the, appreciate the song. In fact, I, you know, when, when we're talking about like very notable busy bone songs, uh, just like nobody can stop me um, on the freeway may get overshadowed again by just the, the the immense magnitude of Thugs Cry, especially Thugs Cry was the first dude coming out the gate swinging. Just what a fucking if 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 they ever did anything right, it was it was that song. It was making sure that that's what you knew, bro. Yeah, there's too much majesty as well on the fucking album. Like it's like, hey, that's cool. Put him on the seventh sign. Don't put him on the fucking Busy Bone Heavens movie. <laughs> yeah, he was he was pushing the seventh sign thing hard. It's All like right, well, it's uh, ten o'clock. It, it's like uh, the gift too is like, you know, I think I think the gift is like a more complete album, but but the fire had like, had had you know gone out a little. Yeah, bit. The, the, no, the gift. <laughs> you know what the gift? I mean, everybody calls it his best album, and but when I first got it, I was like, man, it sounds like Busy's losing his fucking mind. <laughs> like the first time I heard it, I was like, yeah, is this guy going crazy or what? Which he kind of did, but. I just that was my initial impression was oh that's like, crazy this guy's we, going... he 
he was telling people that he was going to go crazy. I had never really thought about that, but that album was definitely telling us, I'm going to shave my fucking head bald and I'm going to wander the streets like a fucking psychopath and no one's fucking listening to me. I mean, think about it, bro. It starts with schizophrenic and there's a song yeah. called Voices in My Head. And yeah. uh, this is what I always think with Busy. He He's not saying this for, for you know, it, it, it's like what I said about comparing him to the Eminem shit. Like he's... He's not saying it for value, bro. Like the shit that this guy says in the songs, like is is real. If if he's telling you there's voice in his in his head, telling him to fucking you know do shit. Like I believe him. Yeah, and then what was even equally strange to me was so he sounded pretty bonkers on that, and then he went and then but on the song I understand, which really was him saying like, hey, I'm about to go homeless, bro. If you love me and you leave me, hey man, I understand. You made some bad decisions, and like literally, that was the prophecy right there. And then he he went he went missing. Like he and that's the other thing. He really went missing, just like the VV Gampini poster said he was gonna do that. So I, I understand. Uh, I think that's like one of the only good songs off that album. And, and he seemed so he seemed so like normal. In that video, right? Like that was the video to promote Alpha and Omega, but then the the song that promote fucking the beginning and the end, which came out at the same time, it was like, is that even Busy Bone? The fucking uh, don't try to hustle me, gotta get your hustle on. You know the song? You know the video I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did that throw Did... you off? Were you like, what in the fuck is this? You know what's weird is like. By that point, they they had lost their fucking minds with you know the guy. There there was no like real direction for for Busy Bone, and like mm. I remember seeing Alpha and Omega, and I'm like, what? Why do they got him dressed like this? Like, are they still trying to dick ride Heaven's movie after all this time? Uh, mm. And I can't I can't remember the gift, but I think there was a a cover before they just decided to make it the weird text. I think there was a different cover. And... Are you serious? I just remember what did, it, what did it look like? I just think it was him. Like I just thought I remember seeing uh I, didn't they use yeah, the gift. They used the fucking picture of him from uh Change the World. Oh shit. Yeah, I gotta see if I can find that. Um But like I remember seeing that and I'm like, why are they still dick riding? Uh why are they still dick riding Heaven's movie? By by the time we got there, you know, all the way up to Alpha and Omega, like even though like that's not the same, you know, he's like wearing the black trench coat and shit. It just still felt very like. I thought like, the Alpha uh, and Omega cover was dope. You you didn't like the Alpha and Omega cover? No, I mean I I don't dislike it. Like I, um, that's not what I'm saying. I, I'm not saying I dislike it. I'm saying like it didn't feel like they were doing anything new. Like, think of under the the cover, under under the CD. That's probably what it is. Think of under the CD for for Thugs Cry or uh for for Heaven's movie. And then think of the the cover of Alpha and Omega. Look, I don't. It's been so long since I've seen the it's, Heaven's movie. It's bu- it's busy. It's busy in the white suit, and he's like looking down, and his hands are like open, like he's looking at something in his hands. Same same oh. situation, bro. It's like the same fucking thing. It's the same fucking thing. I'm looking up Heaven's movie under the tray. See if somebody's got the fucking. Oh yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 but but I, I, I hope like... I didn't just ruin it for you. That like that's I think that's what's always ruined it for me. I'm like, what? I mean, they were just like, all right, bro, you know, we're gonna dress you in some new clothes and do all the pictures that you did from fucking Heaven's movie. Yeah, you know, I think I thought that too at the time, where I was like, but here's what it was. I remember thinking, all right, yeah, just what you said. But then I was like, well, at least he's on the fucking cover this time. At least it's not some black, the gift. You know, just with his uh, name on it, because like just start, not having a look, I didn't was, know how to feel about the album. I gotta see. I don't think anybody has that. There, I'm telling you, before they launched the gift, they took a fucking and and I think that this is why it ended up like this because the original cover was just like a screen 
uh, from the Change the World video, but it's all those same those same fonts you see from the gift cover. It was those mm. same fonts, except it's like busy in the trench coat in the middle of the Change the World video. And I can just remember like people like losing their minds about what a lazy, half-ass thing that was to do. Um, and then all of a sudden it was just it was just text. I just remember. Do you, do you remember any promotion leading up to the gift? I just remember it coming out of nowhere. No, it just and... came out of nowhere. It was it was like with that bungalow records or some shit. I think it was literally like a. Uh, I think it was literally one of those situations where they came up with the bread to do it, um, and then it just came out of nowhere. Like I I don't think there was like a lot. You know what I mean? I think uh, most of the songs kind of suck. Yeah. Well, the Alpha and Omega album, it's. It has to grow on you. It, it doesn't really get that much better, <laughs> but it does get to the point where it's listenable. But it, it it just feels like one big long song. Yeah. And and you know on the beginning and the end, uh, that song. It, it, uh, what the fuck was it called? I mentioned it to you last time. The one that I was like, Bone fans kill for this song. Uh. Uh, what the fuck is it called? Because I want I want to hear your opinion on it. As far as uh, let me pull up the freaking track list. It's it's like one of the ah, shit. What's it called? Hold on. I, I, I'm not super familiar with the beginning and the end album, and I know there's like a lot of like like shit around that album too. Well, it was an, it was like it was what was unique about it too was it was the internet. Okay, hellified game, bro. Yeah. You ever hear uh you ever hear that one? Yeah. The I mean, I, game. Yeah. And I think it's well anyway, the bone fans are but if you if you pull that track up and just look in the comments, people are like, Oh my god. And then head to the ground. I, I in, in ways beginning and the end was somewhat better than Alpha and Omega. I don't know. Well, I think I, beginning and the end was just like it was put out on the internet, right? And it was like his control. There was no label there, right? Like it, so it's it's busy bone doing what the fuck busy bone wants i think that's why it was full of uh that that's there's more like seventh sign features um than anywhere else by the way did you know thug queen was on on that album which one beginning and the end yeah yeah i think she, i think i remember it, but she's really not on it is it is it like called like t uh time travel or some shit yeah i just see she's credited as being on there i think she just talks on it i don't think she actually has a verse i think oh, she really? just talks yeah if, yeah if i remember correctly or maybe she talks on it but way too strong was was a good follow-up like if i had to put the top two i got thugs cry number one way too strong number two i don't know about oh, you do, do, it's, it's, do you have a number it's, two for me uh for like busy i you know i don't know i'd, I'd have to i'd have to think about it i i know that um you know, my second, I think either the, the second best, you know, solo is like heated heavy, probably. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was just saying just busy bone by like not even I'm not saying way too strong is the second best overall. solo. I was just saying if I was ranking busy's tracks one to 10, the best 10, I think way too strong is on that list, if not number two. But um, uh, I wanted to. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to think that through. I'd have to think that through. I'd have to think that through to, to, to really know what the, the second best busy bone is. There, there's really good ones out there, but again, it's, it's going to be this. a distant. Mar Marching on Washington. Was this the greatest tease of all time? The last 20 seconds, because it's only a 58 second snippet, right? So it's got like a bunch of sound and people yelling at the beginning. But, but once Busy's verse kicks in, he's like screaming on it. And then it just fades away. I'm like, no, no, no. I need to hear this. I need to hear this. And I still need to hear this. Like this song, who has it? Who has it? Could you auction it? Because I would love to find a group of people to pay for it. I want to hear the full March and I'm watching it. Was, is this one of those things in your life that you're like, my life's incomplete until I hear the full version of March and I'm Washington by Busy Bone? I'm, I'm, I'm a very jaded soul over Heaven's movie. Yeah, uh, if I haven't, you know, talked about this before, I, I, I think, uh, I think I talk so heavily and so highly of Thug's Cry that sometimes it it overshadows like the upset factor that I have with Heaven's movie. 
Um, because Heaven's movie tease it off in every way that I want. The the artwork was what I wanted. The BB Gambini imagery is what I wanted. And and if you guys remember, like I'm not a fan of Alberna as a name. Uh I was a big fan of BB Gambini. I was like, this makes sense. What the fuck ever? Let this dude do what he's gonna do, bro. Like, like I <laughs> The whole album could have been B.B. Gambini, Heaven's Movie. It wouldn't have hurt my fucking feelings. Like, I, because he he was living what it was to be B.B. Gambini. He was being B.B. Gambini during this. This isn't Busy Bone. That's, that's B.B. Gambini. And they're, they're different fucking things. Uh, they missed it on the tracks. Thug's Cry being the second track followed up with that Marching on Washington snippet you went from a Super Bowl winning play yeah. to fucking it up on the next play and losing it. Fucking it up again. But yeah, although, yes, y'all, like I was okay with that one just being a snippet. Like it, it was just enough. That, you just don't know that. It. You just don't know. Who the fuck knows what the middle was? The, the, the second verse on Yes, Yes, Y'all could be the best busy bone verse of all time, and we don't fucking know. Because you don't go fucking yeah. around putting – snippets I, whatever the reason is whatever anybody's going to list as the reason sampling you, you just you you cut the whole fucking song okay or you throw that shit at the end <laughs> like you don't you, put it you, right yeah. after the thugs like what you were they put thinking it at, the, at the end of social studies there's uh that that yeah, like giant, interview or something yeah yeah throw those clips hidden down in there don't don't put thugs cry and follow it up with a fucking snippet. Don't follow it up with a fucking snippet. What, what are you thinking, bro? What, you know, so, uh, I'm, I'm pretty jaded at heaven's movie because heaven's movie, you know, I, I, it's not busy bone. I know it's not busy bone. You know, it's not busy. Bone's Everybody fault. wanted this. Dude, this was the most anticipated thing. All the, all the posters for it. Like leading up to Heaven's movie, it was like, oh my God, I can't believe we're going to get a, a full Busy Bone album. We're going to find out what Busy's got leading up to it. And then you get in, you're like, I don't even care. I'm just going to play this front to back, expecting a full album. And then you get all these snippets and you're like, did I get the wrong album? What the heck? Why are there snippets? Why? Why? I just wanted to play this thing front to back and let it be a, a story of Heaven's movie. I want, and actually, I think we wanted the album to be called Thuggish Eruption at the time, but it got switched to. Heaven's movie, and we're like, all right, Heaven's movie, fine. That became part of my life, saying Heaven's movie. I, I'm living in Heaven's movie, but it, this was this was probably the most disappointing thing ever. And it wasn't disappointing because it does have great songs on the album. But it does. I think and, everybody and in wanted the big Heaven's scheme, you know, there's perfect. there's only those two like cut snippets. You know what I mean? Um, but the rest are complete tracks. I mean, you got like an intro in there with Brain on Drugs. Uh, but the the rest are are complete tracks, you know. Um, but there's something about the third and fourth song. I mean, because think about it, you got Roll Call, which is an intro, and then you have Thugs Cry, and then two back to back fucking snippets. That is just like taking a diamond and just surrounding it with a bunch of shit, like actual shit. Um, <laughs> It just, it just wasn't the move. It just and and it's too bad because, like I said, the promotion. You know, you know something I loved leading up to this was that promo tape CDs were were the were the those were the thing, bro. At this time, you know, this is '98. CDs are where you're at, and they put out that missing tape. I thought that was such yeah. a cool move. I thought, that, and and there were snippets on that. You know that yeah. that's where that belongs. So it was like you had this tape, and the tape was full of snippets to get you excited for an album that had snippets on it. And I know some fans are just like, get over it. It's, it's, it's two snippets. Skip them. I'm not getting over it because this is supposed to be the greatest solo bone album of all time. And it's not, but it does contain the greatest bone solo song of all time, which is thugs cry. That's at least my pick. That's John Lippy's pick. But now it's time for y'all to pick. We got to know in the comments below, what is the greatest Bone Thugs 
solo song of all time. Don't forget while you're leaving in the comments, hit the share button. Share this with a fellow Bone fan so they can let us know what they think. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, hit that subscribe button and we're going to get you on the next one.